there's good and there's bad in life, but at the end of the day, all of it will pass. You just need to take a deep breath and realize whatever season you're in right now will eventually end. I like that. Yeah. My name's Ashley Moynihan. I'm from Fairfield, Connecticut, born and raised. A life lesson my dad taught me growing up, you need to work hard. But I didn't think I realized what that actually means until I got to that high school phase of club when, you know, that's when all the coaches start spewing, okay, you should be doing the extra wall ball, the extra this. My dad from day one, it was always, let's go pass. But he'd always say it in a way where it wasn't, you need to do your wall ball, you need to do this. It was, let's go have a catch. Let's go have fun. Why don't we go to the turf? Because if you're not enjoying what you're doing and you're putting all this effort in and you're putting all this extra work in and you're not enjoying a single bone of it, why are we doing this? Why are we spending all this time? Good job. Good job. I just really loved everything about Rutgers from how close it is to home, you know, playing in the Big Ten and just playing at that competitive D1 level. I knew that this program had a lot of growth to it and that the best was yet to come. And I knew I'd be building something that was bigger than myself and that had a huge part to do with like why I ended up coming here. Another huge effort play by Ashley Moynihan who has tracked down a few really pivotal ground balls now in this So second. my earliest memory seeing lacrosse on TV was UNC, you know, playing in the national championship and in the final four. And, you know, I grew up loving their team, loving the way they played, you know, watching players like Sammy Joe Tracy just go out there and just dominate. And I thought it was like really, really cool. You know, I grew up, you know, wearing gloves like she did and like really diving in and kind of taking what I saw on TV and trying to like replicate that in the backyard or on the field. I just think that when that would come on the TV once a year, it was such, such a huge thing because it's like, you're never gonna get new people into the sport if they don't know about it. And I think that the PLL has done a great job and even the AeroPro, you know, League for the Women has done a really awesome job marking that, trying to get newer people into the sport. You'll see highlight reels of pole goals or face-offs or just like great defensive plays being posted on ESPN and in the top 10 plays and I think that type of exposure like we wouldn't have gotten years ago because lacrosse wasn't on TV and it wasn't really broadcast and it wasn't marketed on social media and if you don't have that marketing and that exposure no one's ever going to see it no one's going to know about it no one else is going to join it. And then a great defensive play there for the U.S. to take it away. It's Ashley Monahan. I feel like there's a lot of rules and regarding the game, how it's changed over the years. I mean, from when I would watch it on TV in those Final Fours to what it is now, the game is completely different. We have that shot clock now, and they've even made modifications to it throughout my college career. So the pace of the game is so different. I mean, you could hold the ball for five minutes back when I would watch it on TV, and it'd be low scoring games, like maybe max 10 goals. And now you're seeing teams run up 20 goals, and it's crazy. And it's just that's just how the game is played. It's something that, like, the human body is just like moving full speed through all the time. I've never played a game faster on two feet and I think it's so insane and no one wants to watch stop and go. People want to watch fast pace, scoring, scoring, defensive stops and all that other stuff. Sixth goal of the season for Moynihan. For me, I'm really anxious, you know, about finding that job, about those next steps. I know a lot of people have their own views of therapy. There's kind of that stigma still around it. I'm really open about my therapy. Everyone on my team knows about it. If anyone asks me about it, I say I'm in therapy. I don't think there's a huge deal about it. I think it's a really awesome thing, and I think that more people should take advantage of it. When I'm going through any type of situation where I feel like I need help or I just don't want to talk to, it's always my mom and my dad. They're really my rock. I wouldn't be who I am without them. I really try to aspire to make them proud and represent my family really well. What I would tell young girls, whether it's from a young kindergarten where they can understand what I'm saying, or all the way up to high school and they're getting ready to come to college, is that you need to find the unserious and serious. Because obviously everything you're gonna do has a purpose in school, like all the hard work you're gonna put in, like it does matter. But at the end of the day, like if you are not enjoying yourself, that's when we need to take a step back. How can I make this fun? It's just being able to separate yourself from who you are on the field and who you are as a person, because while you think that they may correlate, there is a huge gap in between those two, and they don't directly mean if I'm great on the field doesn't mean I'm a great person and vice versa.